With me now is Leslie Horman, Executive Director of Fort Wayne Youth Theater. Their new production is The Adventures of Huck Finn, and it opens next weekend at the Arts United Center. Welcome, Leslie. Thanks so much for having me. It's well, a pleasure to be here. I want to hear about this adventure of Huck Finn. Well, it's the great American novel. <laughs> it's a wonderful story. Uh, filled with adventure, hijinks, a lot of crazy characters, but it's the classic story. Huck Finn, uh, he escapes from his uh, dad, and he and the escaped slave, Jim, uh, embark on a journey down the Mississippi River, and uh, it's, uh, it's just the Mark Twain classic, and it's very kid-friendly, very family-friendly, and just filled with fun and music and a lot of fun characters. Well, and I think so many people know either the whole story sure. or they know little snippets mm -hmm. of the story, so they're going to be finally reminiscing as they watch this. But I think one of the things that's making this production unique is that it was adapted by Harvey Cox. Yes, Harvey Cox, so, our how artistic does he, director. How does he adapt it and then go about the job of directing it? Yeah, he's, he's very, very good at doing this. He has adapted many, many uh, stories and books into children's plays, and uh, he said that Huck Finn was one of the hardest ones because there's really? so oh, many so scenes. It's mm -hmm. a very, very big book, and you know, it's an hour-long show because it is children's theater. We make it about, every show is about an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you gotta keep the kids' attention, right. and you know, that's such a, a time span. Um, but he just picked the more famous scenes mm -hmm. and just does a great job of just keeping the flow moving and uh, something very, very enjoyable and kid-friendly. We want to keep keep that emphasis. Well, and I think as the adapter of the play, he directing it then, he knows what he wanted yes. wants to get yes. across from those you special bet. scenes. He writes the scenes and he has uh, the vision in his mind mm -hmm. and that does make it easier then as a director. And uh, boy, he directs 40 kids and you know the task of bringing the pages to life, he really does a, a super job. Well, and he is not doing that alone. You are helping in lots of different ways. Sure. So besides being the executive director, your assistant director for this show, and I have a long list of other things that <laughs> you're doing. You know, so tell us a little bit about, you know, the other things that you're doing, the costumes, the choreography. The costuming, of course, it's, uh, you know, it's in the 1880s, uh, so it's, uh, you know, kind of pioneerish. Uh, they're not uh, rich townspeople. It's a very poor, poor group of people. And uh, so it's, you know, a lot of pioneer outfits. And we did get, uh, we have a huge wardrobe down in the, in the dungeon, as I call it, of the Arts United Center, and we pulled a lot of costumes from there. Um, as far as uh, there's dancing, I choreographed some numbers. There's a square dance, uh, and what, Hoosier doesn't love square dancing, <laughs> That's right. um, but you know they gather. One of the scenes they gather for a uh, a show that these two con men are putting on, and the the family or the. Uh, the town gets together and they they do a real neat little square dance. So that's another part of it, and uh, it's comes to be that I'm also uh, I have a role in the show. <laughs> I'm one of three adults, actually four adults in the show, okay. and uh, I play the old woman who uh, Huck. Uh, is dressed up as a woman. He's trying to escape, right. and so he's in disguise. And he comes to this woman. You know, it's just a random house, and gets food from her uh, because he's hungry. And it's a it's a real neat scene. But it's a, it's a small part. But it's kind of neat to be back on the youth theater stage because I grew up on that stage. Yeah. Uh, you know, in third grade I started with youth theater, and so wow, it's kind of a homecoming. That's a wonderful cameo appearance. It's for a cameo. You. <laughs> yes, very juicy part. So the. Um, how similar or dissimilar is this to the original stage version or even to the film adaptation? Sure, sure. Um, well, we, uh, like I said, he has to be very choosy about the scenes he picked. Mm -hmm. And the scenes, uh, like I said, they're very, very high action. So there's a lot, you know, because once again, when you're dealing with children, mm -hmm. you know, you can't get tripped down in the, in the verbiage. Uh, they, they keep very, very active and there's a lot going on. We also add a lot of Americana music. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got two choirs, one from Arlington Elementary mm -hmm. under the direction of Janet Piercy and uh, one from uh, Canterbury Lower School under the direction of Kristen Marquell, and they intersperse Americana folk tunes mm -hmm. through the uh, show, and it's, it's a wonderful transitional piece to have the music. It uh, show offs the choir, mm -hmm. and it adds a real folk flavor. You know, the music adds to the, to the actual are, uh, scene. Are both choirs on at they the take, same time, they, they're taking turns they with take different turns, performances. Yes, with two How many voices are in each of those choirs? About forty. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness! So, so that's really quite neat. a sound. Yes, it's a great sound. Getting out and of it's that. it's great music that we all grew up with. Uh, you know, Shoe Fly yeah. and uh, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, and it's like I said, it's Americana, it's folk music, but it just adds so much to the show. The um, 
and I think you've already touched on this a little bit, but for the length of the book, yes. you know, it's an hour yeah, yes. yeah, in this, you know. He really had to do some choosing mm -hmm. because there's, you know, it's a very, very large book. And so right. he definitely had to choose some of the stories and some of the, some of the scenes. So for the kids who are acting on the stage, I mean, that's, you know, helpful that it's a manageable length piece, but sure. also the kids in the audience. I mean, these are very family friendly productions yes, yes. so that, you know, kids of any age are going to enjoy you the bet. music you and bet. the action is going to just keep going. They keep it rolling. So speaking of short, season opener, you've had a pretty short rehearsal span. I think this. of any of the community theaters, youth theater has the shortest rehearsal time of any of the community theaters. Uh, we just rehearse three weeks in the rehearsal hall, then we have four days on stage, and then we, it's showtime. I think the kids, their minds just are more able Quick. to grasp that. They're than pretty good at memorizing. You'd be yeah. surprised how good they are at memorizing. And uh, you know, they're, they're ready to get on the stage. Three mm -hmm. weeks up in a rehearsal hall, let me on that too stage. Long for them. And we do perform at the Arts United Center uh, where the Civic Theater performs, mm -hmm. where the ballet performs, and it's a huge stage and it's mm -hmm. just, you know, it's very enticing. It's a lot of space to fill, so you bet. you're going to have a lot of people 40 in kids. the show. 40 kids. Mm -hmm. 40 okay, people. so it's not it's not an ensemble cast. You do have some lead actors you bet. in these yeah. parts. Andrew Bauer is our Huck Finn. Mm -hmm. Wonderful job with the dialect. He mm -hmm. has the dialect perfect. And Ennis Brown Jr. plays our Jim. And he uh, he's very familiar to uh, theater goers in the community. He played, uh, he was in Dream Girls. He recently got done with A Few Good Men. So he's a wonderful uh, actor in the community theater. And this is something fun for him because he gets to do children's theater. And that's kind of a fun little stretch for these actors to do children's theater because it's very specific and it's different than your other community theater. Well, and the, you know, with 40 people in the, in the cast, mm -hmm. and how many of them are adults then? Three. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, three adults. So Actually, four adults. Four, four adults. adults. Yeah, oh, including my myself. Gosh. So, well, that's just a great mix, though, because it's it wonderful is. for the kids to get used to working with adults and uh -huh. for the adults to be mentors to sure. all of these um, actors as well. So, putting on the show, you've also got to have a fabulous set because I think people are going to realize. Oh my goodness, they're going to be going down the Mississippi on a raft. You know, We've got a how, raft. Tell me about your sets and how you are making all of that come alive. Sure. Well, you know, we've got uh, some set pieces, as we call it, you know, little shacks where Huck lives. Uh, but we do have the famous raft because a lot of the uh, a lot of the action takes place on that raft. And in fact, uh, we have a stagecraft class. You know, youth theater offers 13 different classes. And one of the classes is stagecraft. So the set is, uh, a lot of it is done by these, these uh, middle school and high school students that are getting great hands-on experience into the other aspect of theater, the behind the scenes aspect of theater. So you've got the raft, you've got the wagons too. I mean, sure. that's gotta be another big part of mm -hmm. the, the set that the Definitely. kids are all over. The, um, with the children or adults, how can they get involved in youth theater? What is the, you know, how do they start? You know, it's great. You come down and, and you should audition first of all. Um, anyone can audition. You don't have to be taking a class to audition. Um, it's a great exercise in presenting yourself uh, confidently with poise, uh, with self belief, and it's a great experience to uh, you know to get in and just to give it a try. You don't have to do any prep. You come in and we just have you do a little bit of reading. Uh, we have kids audition from six all the way to adults. Mm -hmm. And uh, so auditioning is a good way to become involved. We also have classes, as I mentioned mm -hmm. before, 13 different classes. That's a great way to kind of whet your appetite, mm -hmm. you know, test the waters. Learn what acting is you all bet. about. You and bet. I, I am guessing that all of this information, the audition notices and the classes are on your website. It sure so is. So everybody can go there to learn when the next show is going to be and yes. how to audition, where yes. to call, where good to show stuff. up. And just come see a show. That's a, that's a great way to kind of see what it's all about. And people have been watching these shows for 78 seasons. 78 I, I, seasons. I, so just the age of Fort Wayne Youth Theater, uh -huh. it shouldn't really be called youth theater. Yeah. It should be like elder theater. But I mean, <laughs> this has got to be one of the oldest sure. ones in the country. Fourth oldest in the nation. Oh my gosh. Fourth oldest in the nation. I don't think a lot of people realize that. Yeah. But uh, we were started in 1934 and uh, we have been sustained by uh, support through the community and all the surrounding area. So with Huck Finn being the opening act, mm -hmm. you know, how does that kind of set the stage for the rest of your season? You know, tell me how you've chosen 
What's going all on All the things next? that we choose are literature based. Mm -hmm. They're all based on a children's classic. Mm -hmm. We open with Huck Finn, like you said, um, and then in, we do um, The Snow Queen is our next one. That's okay. our holiday show. All it's right. the Hans Christian Andersen classic. We follow The Snow Queen and all its icy magic with Oliver, and that's the classic musical. Oh, and that's going to be a collaboration yes. with IPFW Department I'm of Theater. I'm very excited about working with John. That's going to be a John. big show. Yes, very John O'Connell and I are, are directing this. He's the director, I'm the assistant. I'm the assistant director slash child wrangler. And I'm guessing you're going to have a whole lot of bulleted items after your name about the different <laughs> things that you exactly. do again in yes. that. Yes, and then we're ending after uh, Oliver, we're doing Anansi the Spider, and anyone who's familiar with children's literature is very familiar with uh, the trickster tales, it's African folk tales, and we're okay. gonna have large scale spiders and large scale puppets on stage uh, with elephants oh and my gosh. All, all sorts of stuff. The uh, the camps that you've got. Yes, you know, we've got coming, one coming up. You've got a winter camp. And we then sure do. Tell us a little bit about the camps. If you're looking for something to do, it's the two days between uh, Christmas and New Year's, so it's mm -hmm. during Christmas okay. break, and this is a perfect way for someone to come and just kind of get a taste of what a youth theater class is all about. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, from 10 until 2. Uh, you have lunch with us, and you spend, you can do one day or, or both days, all things theater, pantomime, improvisation, choreography, scene study, dialogue, uh, blocking, a little bit of music, makeup, puppets, it's just, it's all things theater and it's jam-packed into one fun-filled day. You can go, like I said, one day or both, but it's a really a great way to uh, get to know youth theater and maybe you'd want to take a class after camp. And you don't have to have any experience to you, do these camps, they're just going to all. learn the basics. Second grade uh -huh. and up. Second grade, okay. Yep. Great. Yes. So, can you tell us how to get tickets, how to get information about your about your program and about the Huck sure. Finn that's coming up? Well, get online at fortwayneyouththeater.org, all one word, fortwayneyouththeater.org. And uh, for tickets, you can call our box office 422-4226. That's 422-4226. And you can, of course, buy tickets online. Okay. Thank goodness for the 21st century. Yeah, <laughs> it makes it a whole lot it easier, does. doesn't it? Well, thank you so much for being here, Leslie. I am Melinda Haynes with the IPFW College of Visual and Performing Arts. On the next Arts Weekly, we'll talk with Dr. Hamilton Tescarolo from the IPFW Department of Music and his piano student, Jason Simon, who will be playing the Rachmaninoff Symphony No. 2 in an upcoming Fort Wayne Philharmonic concert. Then we'll be joined by Jonathan Mogg and Robert Showquist to discuss the creative energy they've brought to the sets and lights at the Fort Wayne Civic Theater. Watch us here live next Thursday evening at 7.30 on PBS 39. The preceding program on PBS 39 was made possible in part by... Excellence lives here, here in Northeastern Indiana. It's reflected in more than 200 nationally recognized degrees. It drives our Division I sports. It's alive in our campus life. Excellence has a name, IPFW. Around our campus, around the country, around the world. Excellence lives here. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names.